sorry about the mess, guys. I'm um, still trying to trace out the pin pinout on this um, uh, display that came with this little controller here. <laughs> like, I mean, little. Look at that. How small it is. Uh, there's the paperwork for the uh, pinout for it. And basically, all this display really does is it gives you five volts out. Put 60 into it. Five volts out. Um, you can it gives you the um, voltage there which is actually not too it's pretty accurate uh, so far I've been able to get the that to work and the USB the USB was hilarious so that's the reason I'm starting a video now is because <laughs> it uh, the minute I went to plug it in on the side here the plug literally fell off uh, the solder mask on the board was fine it didn't tear anything, it just wasn't soldered. So I beefed it up on the sides and uh, reflowed the uh, pins. But that's, that was hilarious. I literally just fell in the unit. I didn't even give it a lot of force. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is to show, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a line out. Because when I turn this on, it's going to actually turn my e-bike on. Uh, it'll it'll operate. This uh, solid state relay will work on 12 volts to 5 volts for the input. So well, it's 3 to 30 volts input. So I can run this off the USB. So when you turn the display on, the bike will turn on. So I'll just have the a power button. This power button will literally activate my bike. Uh, what else? I'm trying to see if I can get the, this, this, the uh, kilometers to show up, but I doubt it will, will actually work. Uh, because the way, from what I understand, the way this thing works is it communicates with the, the pick on the controller. So you gotta, you gotta hack into the TX and VX and all that crap. And I've already opened up the large ones, the same brain power uh, Amazon controller same brand as you can see there brain power and this one is the same and I was pinning it out and this one has F5 and F4 but it's not really hooked up to anything so I don't think that's going to work on that one I'm still working on it but uh, even if I can't get it to work I, mean, I spent 40 bucks out I'm happy with the display it shows me the voltage and I can uh, turn the bike off and on with it if, uh, like I said, if I can get to this, this to display the kilometers or whatever, that'd be great, but uh, I doubt it. I'm still playing with it. I'll, uh, I'll give you an update when it's, uh, when it's done. Well, that sucks. This has probably never happened to me on any, any device I've been working on. Um, so I fixed the USB, lined it up, no problem. If everything is working... And I put the board back in, made sure it was flush and sitting properly, put the two screws in that were holding it down. I go to put this back on, and maybe it's defective or what, I don't know, but there was no force when it went to put it on. It was flush all the way around, and I went to put the screws in, and there's no screw that would actually interfere with the, um, the LCD, but when I went to put the screws back in, I heard a pop or a crack, and uh, <laughs> the LCD is cracked right down the right down the middle. So luckily, you can unplug it here and replace the unit. So what I'll do is I'll just continue on. I'll like I got it set up right now where you hit the power button, the lights will come on, and it uh, it operates my soft start, which is a good feature. Plus, it'll show me the voltage. So I'll use it like that. Plus, I have the USB on the side for the five volts for the phone. That's what I wanted it for. So I'll set it up for now on the bike, and then eventually down the road I'll just replace the unit and plug a new one in. But I figured since it's, well this one here is ready for 60 volts, um, I'm going to give it the full 71 volts from my pack and uh, see what it does. See if we can actually handle that. If not, then I'll have to run out of lower voltage. Okay, well I think you got it running at 71 volts, which is a good thing. That's what my pack voltage is. Um, yeah, I'm we'll trying to test this with one hand. Let's 
72.5 well 72.2 but the uh, batteries have been sitting for a while so it'll be a little bit higher once it's fully charged but it does work it's on the USB right now it's powering that light I'm just monitoring the um, FET on the back it's pretty warm Mind you, this draws a lot of MA, so. But it does work. Still functions. Yep. So I will. I'll consider. Um. I mean, I'll. I want to continue to set it up as if uh, it didn't break, and then down the road, I'll just unplug it and put the other one on. Again, reuse the um, bracket and everything else. I'm going to reuse the controller. Oh well, it is what it is. I well, figured out what it was. This is for anybody working on this uh, this type of unit. If you have to fix the USB or even take it apart for whatever reason, uh, the thick negative and positive lead for the um, USB, make sure you push them up. And have them nowhere near those two capacitors there because there's only enough room in the bottom of this case that touches the back of those capacitors. And if those wires are there, when you put the screw in there and over here, it uh, bends the board, and that's basically what uh, killed the LCD. It's a double plus, uh, double glass. So that's what did it. Once I pushed it up there and I went to put it back down, it it, it totally changed the way it was sitting. So just so you know, I figured I'd share that so you don't end up like me with a busted LCD. Yeah, I'm not going to bother replacing it. Um, and basically it does what it does and plus I can run it uh, found out I can run it at 12 volts and it'll still use the USB and power my um, soft start so it'll shut off and on which is pretty good at least I took the LCD out because obviously it's cracked it's no good no earthly good but uh, it'll show me that it's on when the bike comes on so it's good for that and it gives me the 12 volts to 5 volts out, which would still cost me about 40 bucks for that anyway, so it's all good. It's incorporated into the build. Move on. Well, it wasn't a total loss. At least I got to do what I wanted to do. Um, just in the process of putting my uh, voltage meter underneath it. It's glued down, but uh, I'm using glue that if I have to remove it to adjust it because the screws are underneath. I can just pull it off and pull the glue off. Won't leave a residue. But uh, basically, the way it's set up now, I just basically hit this light uh, switch here, and the solid state relay. As you can see, it's activated, and I should have throttle. Oh, there it goes. So yeah, it's working. At least it serves serves that purpose. Uh, what I did is the light blue and purple wire that were coming off the back of the board for the RX and TX, I basically soldered them to the USB. So they're, what they're doing basically is now is sending a 5 volt signal without adding an extra wire down to my solid state that I modified a couple of years ago. Uh, there's four FETs in here. Um, good for up to 200 watt, uh, amps. Uh, mount, I always mount it like this to the air pass over it because it does get warm. Um, if you were just to buy this without modifying it, uh, I have another one here. It just it'll just burn out. It'll just overheat and burn out, even with the heat sink. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. For me, for forty dollars, I got another controller out of it, and I got a soft start that actually works pretty good. Later, guys.